Hello and welcome to the channel. Do you know what a Dyson Sphere is? No, I'm not talking about those bladeless fans. No, this is something completely different. It's literally on a different scale. Imagine being able to harness the sun's power enough to power the whole globe for billions of years. Picture that. Unlimited power, unlimited electricity for the whole globe, it becomes a commodity, essentially. Imagine a world like that. Well, it's possible if we build a Dyson Sphere. Is it possible to do it with today's technology? I don't know. Basically, Dyson Spheres are solar panels almost engulfing the whole sun. Engulfing the whole sun. And if you have enough of them, you could harness a good percentage of the sun. Imagine we were able to do this. Imagine we were able to actually harness this. Well, our trusty Cork Arts channel is going to break it down. In today's video, we're going to find out how to build a Dyson Sphere, the ultimate mega structure. If you're interested in these type of videos, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel because we're going to keep pumping these out. Let's get into the video. Human history is told by the energy we use. At first, we had to use our muscles, then we learned to control fire. Yeah, isn't that like fire was one of the huge groundbreaking steps for mankind, right? Is there any other species, animals, creatures that control fire like we do? I don't think there is. We industrialized the world using coal and oil and entered the atomic age when we learned how to split a nucleus. Mm -hmm. This was supposed to be the promise of some clean energy, you know, except for the waste. But it's much more cleaner than fossil fuels, that's for sure. At each step, we increased our energy harvest to a scale never seen before and advanced as a species. Currently, we're slowly transitioning to renewables, and if we're lucky, fusion energy will become viable in the future. Now, fusion, fusion, that, that's the same process that happens in the core of the sun. If we master that, that's almost also unlimited energy. That completely makes, that completely makes all these other renewable type energies obsolete because the, the outputs and the effort and the maintenance required is, again, completely different scales. Future. As humanity progresses further, if we don't destroy ourselves or our habitat, we will mm -hmm. stop these wars. <laughs> will likely gain complete control of our planet's resources. At that stage, we'll probably begin to look outwards for new places to expand into. Hello, Moon. But space is Hello, Mars. hard, and establishing a serious human presence in the solar system will require ungodly amounts of energy. Luckily, we <laughs> battery die on the moon. Know where to find it. The sun, the ultimate source of energy. All oh, that power. A furnace 100 quintillion times more powerful than our most efficient nuclear reactor. Quintillion. Quintillion. It shines with the energy of a trillion nuclear bombs per second. What? <laughs> what? A trillion nuclear bombs per second per second second so how do we get this energy not some of it all of it corker's arts if we want to collect the most energy physically possible we'll have to build the largest most ambitious structure in the universe the i mean uh, where will we even get this much construction material <laughs> to, to cover the whole sun? I mean, that, that sounds ridiculous. Does it even need to be this ambitious? If you're uh, an expert in this field, you tell me. Can we have maybe like 100 solar panels type devices floating around the sun, just orbiting the sun closer in a closer orbit? Does it really require this huge, humongous structure that completely engulfs the sun? Obviously, this is not good for Earth. We need the sun to shine, right? We need it to shine for life to still be sustainable on any of the planets in the solar system. The Dyson Sphere, a mega structure that encompasses a whole star to capture its power output. For an intelligent species, building a Dyson Sphere is a technological leap on a par with the discovery of fire for our ancestors. The transition from a planetary species to an interstellar species. 
Look at this. Okay. Ring World. Stellar Engine. Black Hole Bomb. What? It would usher in an age of exploration and expansion on a scale we can barely imagine. So, what would it look like? A solid shell enveloping the sun is probably not the way to go. A nope. large rigid body... Just like I was saying, that's, that's ridiculous. That's just uh, cutting off the sun from our planet. ...like that would be vulnerable to impacts, possibly shattering. It would... <laughs> He's, the excuse they used, the reasoning for them was, oh, it's, it's vulnerable to shattering. How about like doing that will eliminate daytime? How about doing that eliminates warm weather on this planet? <laughs> How about that? How about all life ceasing to exist on Earth? How about that? Would be liable to drift and could crash straight into the sun. A more viable design for a Dyson Sphere might be a Dyson Swarm, an enormous set yeah, of orbiting panels that... That's... that's there we go. The swarm. I, I I think doing a swarm is probably even feasible right now. You could go test it out. I don't know if we have the material science down pat that could withstand that kind of radiation. And on top of that, you know, how, how do you send that power back to where you need it? How do you beam that power? Do you send battery cells that sh keep flying back and forth? Do you beam it in a laser somehow? Like what? How would it work? collect the sun's power and beam it elsewhere okay there we go all i had to do was listen such a swarm would give humanity basically beam unlimited network. energy but beam building it won't be easy the sun is very big so we need a lot of satellites mm. if each satellite is a square kilometer we'd need around 30 quadrillion to surround the sun <laughs> what <laughs> good luck with that even if they're built as lightly as possible, we need about 100 quintillion tons of material. And then we need mm. the energy to actually put the parts together and deliver them to their positions around the sun. On top Crazy. of all that, we need to have a permanent infrastructure set up in space to start building. Let's assume for the purposes of this video that... I okay, look at that. Would you look at that? Our descendants will take care of that and want to create the megastructure. We can sort the challenges into three main categories. Materials, design, and energy. Mm. To get the vast amounts of raw materials required for our Dyson Swarm, we'll have to largely disassemble a whole planet. Of the... <laughs> what? <laughs> We're not there. We're not there. A whole goddamn planet? Harvest the whole planet? into pieces we're not there and it's available mercury is the best candidate it's the closest to the sun and very metal rich close to the sun also means less moving stuff around and mercury has no atmosphere and only about a third of the surface gravity third of the gravity no atmosphere how about the heat i guess on the dark side is it tidally locked is mercury tidally locked to the sun the of earth making it comparatively easy to launch material into space Next, we should consider the design of our swarm. Simpler is better. Mm. Conventional solar panels are far too intricate and short-lived. Our satellites need to operate without repairs or intervention for astronomically long times, and they need to be cheap to produce. Mm -hmm. They're most likely going to be enormous mirrors, which refocus sunlight to central collecting stations, like in concentrated solar power on Earth. Okay, that, that's simple. Just using mirrors... And I guess something to allow it to adjust its orbit and adjust its positioning. To build and launch them efficiently, they must be incredibly light, made of little more than polished metal foil bound to some supports. Wow. And last, we need the energy to build and launch the swarm itself. Taking apart a planet and launching things into space requires an enormous amount mm -hmm. of energy. For example, if we used all the fossil fuels and uranium on Earth and we were perfectly efficient, we could only launch as much mass as Mount Everest into space. Jeez. <laughs> R.I.P. to this idea. It looks like it's dead in the water already. What the? A rather meager accomplishment compared to planetary disassembly. Indeed. Indeed. To get the energy needed to build a Dyson Sphere, it's almost as if you're going to need the power output of a Dyson Sphere. Right, right. But that's okay. There's plenty of sunlight to be had on Mercury, so let's get to work. Mm. Humans are expensive to keep alive. and Start using robots or birds. Use quartz, quartz cosorts birds 
instead of humans, yes. Very sensitive to the environment, so we'd want to automate as much as possible. Ideally, we'd have a small crew of controllers who oversee an army of autonomous machines doing the actual work. Mm -hmm. There are four AI. major pieces of technology required. Solar collectors, miners, mm -hmm. refiners, and launch equipment. Okay. The solar collectors are going to give us the energy we need to disassemble the planet. To start, right. maybe we deploy something like one square kilometer of them, either as mirrors or as traditional solar panels. They'll provide the energy to run our miners, which strip mine the surface of the planet and our refiners. Exactly. So, yeah, just build it in portions and just use the power output that you're getting from those limited solar collectors to provide the energy we need to continue building the swarm. Which extract valuable elements and fabricate them into our swarm satellites. To get them into space, we need a creative and efficient solution. Rockets right, right. are too expensive and difficult to deorbit and re and require gas, I mean, not gas, but fuel, which is a limited resource, especially on Mercury. We use. Instead, we'll want to use a sort of railgun, a long electromagnetic track which launches our satellites wow. at high speeds. Wow. Our swarm satellites would be packed tight for launch, unfurling like an enormous origami once in orbit. From this point, we can take advantage of exponential growth using the mm. energy of the existing parts of the swarm to build more infrastructure on Mercury and launch new panels faster and faster. Wow. Each panel provides the energy to build another. Those two yes. work together to build the next two. Yes. Four become eight, eight yes. becomes 16, and so on. Within whoa, just whoa. about 60 doubling times, the sun would be completely surrounded by solar panels. And this can happen quickly. If a square kilometer solar of solar dominance takes a month to build, we could be done in a decade. If only our infrastructure... Wow, a decade. I don't know, Corcus Arts, that sounds a bit ambitious. A decade? ...on the planet's surface can keep up with the quickly growing budget of energy. Okay. Even collecting 1% of the sun's energy is an unbelievable change in our species' energy. Blow up the whole planet with that ray coming back with all that power. ...budget. We could create the infrastructure to beam basically unlimited amounts of energy around the solar system for all sorts of projects. Colonies on other worlds, terraforming planets, constructing more megastructures. Oh my god. Imagine the potential with all this power or even traveling to other stars it could be the start of an interstellar civilization based on physics alone this is not just possible but easy whoa, whoa, whoa. they said it's easy not just possible it's easy let's get this going it's such a simple process and such a necessary step for any species to expand beyond their home planet that many astronomers think there are probably Dyson spheres already out there in the Milky Way. We haven't spotted any yet, but they could be there. It's f I mean, how would they spot it? You could barely spot a planet traveling in front of the, the sun. Now imagine little tiny swarms. That's, it's going to be hard to spot that. Far from certain that humanity will ever get to this point. Our attention is too often focused on short-term political gains and conflicts that will... Yeah. Too much of this. Like, the amount of money used on war machines, war, murder, destruction, is just... It's sad. Like, if that was redirected to much more valuable things, if only... We could all get along. Not matter in the long run. But if we survive the challenges we've set ourselves, we could potentially become the first species in the universe Duh. to create a structure with the scope of a star. If we do it, the only limitation left will be our own imagination. Mm -hmm. So that's the end of this video. Very fascinating concept. Imagine a world with unlimited power. No more electricity bills, or there'll probably still be some bills because you need the infrastructure to deliver that power to you and your home. But I bet you there'll be things like roads where y your your electric car automatically gets charged just as you're driving. Just no worries about a lot of different high power consumption tools that you know could be a reality in the future with such 
power output availability. And then, you know, there's still a lot of parts of the world that are still dark and cut off from power. Imagine the benefits to the environment, right? Because you wouldn't need to consume all this fuel, fossil fuel anymore. Ah, the, the benefits are immense. And then on top of that, you saw that creating machines to build and terraform planets. Jeez. Let me know what your thoughts. What would be the biggest benefits that you see in the comments? And make sure you like and subscribe to this channel. And let me know if you have any other video suggestions that I should go check out that are fascinating and interesting. Thank you for watching. Glad to have you here. Happy New Year. Dom Mecca out.